Like never before African woman, you're the one I adore If you hood educated, I'm glad you made it. Allow me to unfold my knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from a hood brother's point of view to all of you here, there, and everywhere. Now check me out. Hey man, I'm thinking about the event that happened over there. Let me tell you something. When the first dude stepped up to Rose, the little short fat one that looked like uh, Bam Bam Bigelow from wrestling, when he stepped up and then I squat down his eyes and told him what I said. Basically, boy, if I hit you, I'm going to see everything you ate for the last two days. His balls dropped out of his ass. He never said another word. He never did nothing. He was a straight buster. Then the nigga behind him said, I know MMA. And then I got hit with a drink. I'm still convinced ain't no nigga punch me. Somebody said, Rose, the nigga tried to punch you. He, he hit you. I said, nah. He had to throw a drink, because throwing a drink would have been way more disrespectful than screaming, I know MMA! Man. The boss said, man, let the diamond talk. Yeah. I just thought he got a diamond talk. Rick Ross, he done broke his silence, y'all. And he's smiling and laughing and showing his jewelry and stuff like that. Um, people that has millions and millions of dollars and stuff like that, sometimes they believe that there's a bubble around them. And they believe that, you know, that people that don't have as much money as them are below them. And they believe that we are dumb. And that we are stupid. And I'm talking about Rick Ross must believe that everybody is blind like we can't see. This man laid up here and lied to the whole world and said that he did not get punched. And that he believed that the guy threw a drink at him. The reason why he's saying that he believed a guy blew a drink at, I mean, threw a drink at him, we're going to get into that later on. But no, Rick Ross. Did nobody blow? Did nobody throw a drink at you, dude? Hit you with this right here. We all seen it with our own too. We seen him hit you in your face. Now y'all know. I look. I can't show that. That's fight. I can't show that on my YouTube channel. I don't demonstrate like that. But if you want to check out the video, I'm talking about. I slowed it down for you and everything so that you can see. That this man actually hit you in your face. Go over there. The link is going to be pinned at the top of the comment section. Go over there and get you a, a membership at my uh, Hood Educated channel. And you're going to see the whole demonstration. Now, before I proceed, allow me to give a shout out, man, to everybody who has joined the membership over there. Everybody who has joined the membership over here at the YouTube channel and everybody who are new subscribers. I want to give a shout out to y'all and let y'all know that I appreciate y'all. But now let's get back into this demonstration. Um, am I promoting the violence? No, nah. no. Nah. But what I am doing is I'm correcting the lie. You're not finna sit up here and just lie to everybody in their face and say we ain't see dude sock you in your face. But it gets deeper than that, right? I just wanted to check Rick Ross for a minute and I'm gonna check you a little bit more, brother, because I believe you out of pocket. But it gets deeper than that because I want to talk about Drake. Listen, y'all. Drake, it appears to me, has been running a play on these brothers. Anybody that he almost intuited with. Somehow, they get a booking out there in Canada, in Toronto. And this bag be so large that these guys got to go out there and they got to go get that bag. 
But I would like to believe in my mind that Drake is behind the scenes of bringing these rappers out there. And once they get out there, I'm talking about he got some people that be trying to whoop these dudes. Look, y'all probably saying hood educated, you tripping, you know, this just was a small incident and stuff like that. Well, no, let's go back in history because we forget for we like to forget a lot. Well, let's go back in history. Do y'all remember when Pusha T went out there to Toronto? Do y'all remember what happened? When he jumped on that stage and started rapping, Pusha T, him and Drake was into it at that time. Do y'all understand that it was a brawl that happened? That them boys was trying to rush the stage to go get Pusha T? Do y'all remember that? Look, check it out. I'm going to show y'all the part where they start throwing liquor and water and all that old type of stuff at Pusha T. But if you want to see the brawl that happened after that, you're going to have to go over there to my Too Raw for YouTube channel, my Hood Educated YouTube channel. The link it will be pinned at the top of the comment section. You can go over there and see the brawl. They was trying to rush the stage to get Pusha T when he was in Toronto. Check it out. See what I'm saying? Y'all seen how they did the brother? Throwing water and everything. Did y'all see all that liquor thrown at that man on the stage? And y'all heard what he said. He even knew it. He said, man, this man done paid some guys to throw water. You see what I'm saying? To throw liquor. He even knew. He knew what the play was afterwards. He, oh, this is what he on. So now, here it go again. Now we got Drake. I mean, I mean, pardon me, excuse me. Now we got Rick Ross who goes out there to Toronto and the same thing happened. How is it that after he do his show that these guys have this type of access to Rick Ross? And the only thing that he got between him is his security. Where is the venue security? Why the venue security ain't stop these guys from getting close to Rick Ross? You see what I'm saying? Venue security supposed to been on top of them guys. Hold on. This is Rick Ross. We done brought him. him. No, y'all can't get um, back up. What? They let them, man, if them boys had knives, if them boys had guns, Rick Ross, hey, man, ain't no telling. Ain't no telling. We probably be sitting up here talking about stories about Rick Ross and how, they, how he got killed in Toronto. But they used their hands. And instead of killing and all that old type of stuff, they humiliated him. I'm talking about beating him. Man, look, they whooped the man security guards. I got that too, y'all. If y'all ain't seen it, go over there, get your membership. You're going to see that. And they knocked both of his security guards out. The men's, I'm talking, the big security guard was sitting there. I'm talking about they whooping him so bad. He got up days. He didn't know what was going on. And then after that, the other guy that tried to fight for Rick Ross, they hit, his security guard is trying to fight for him. They whooped, knocked him clean out. I'm talking about sleep knocked out. They trying to pick him up. He sleep. Rick Ross had to escape. He had to run because them boys was on him whooping his security. How your security get whooped? 
These are the people, these are your bodyguards. A bodyguard is supposed to guard your body. And when you think about it, right? When you think about it, even though they got work, they use their lives as a willing sacrifice so that Rick Ross can get up out of there. And that's what he did. Now, look, allow me to say this right here. Um, if you're not taking care of them boys for putting their life on the line like that for you, uh, you's a coward because you ran and you should have sacrificed your life with them. But if you're not taking care of them, I said if, you are a big coward. Because for one, uh, you should have had way more security than what you had. How could you put all that pressure on two people? You got, come on, brother. You got two security guards. One brother big for nothing. I mean, no disrespect, but he just big. I understand he supposed to move the crowd, but he by himself. It's on two of them. It's just two. So now, I mean, like, we got to learn from this right here. A lot of you entertainers, you rappers, you comedians, whatever. Look, no, you need a, a team. Because you seen how they got overpowered. If they wouldn't have got Rick Ross up out of there, I'm telling you, they we'd have been talking about it. We'd have been talking about, man, Rick Ross got whooped. Not just punched, he got whooped. Now, being that all this happened... And this is the second time that this done happened in Toronto. Uh, Drake, you playing a dangerous game. You playing a very dangerous game. The same way that you got people that love you in Toronto and the same way that you can hire people to disrupt shows and, and to try to, you know, run up and fight rappers and stuff like that in Toronto. Do you think they ain't got that in L.A., in Miami? You think they ain't got that? You think they ain't got some of them boys out there in Miami that's willing to go crazy like that for Rick Ross? Huh? You got to be out your mind. You got to be if you think they ain't got people like that that would crash out for Rick Ross. And it done got so deep where you got old heads. I'm talking about you got classic brother, brothers like Luke coming out and saying, hey, man, look, this right here might be a Miami might be a no fly zone for you, bro. You might not be welcome in Miami. No, nah, after you done did what you did to Rick Ross. Check it out. This whole fighting uh, my boy Ross and his guys in Canada, that's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Unacceptable. That don't happen. That don't supposed to happen. And what's more unacceptable is when Mr. Drake liked the post. That also is unacceptable. I expect more out of Mr. Drake. When there is violence, when there is violence, you don't condone it. You should be bigger than that. Mr. Drake, you should be bigger than that. When there is violence, you don't condone that. You don't like, like no posters and all that because here's what happens. There is always a backlash of it all. Here's what happens when now you've inserted yourself. Even if you were not involved, half of the country think you set the man up. They book a show in in Canada and you send your goons out there uh, to agitate and start a fight with Ross. And y'all do what you do on the, on the TV. Half the country think that. When you, Mr. Drake, like the post, you just inserted yourself into violence toward Mr. Ross and his crew. When you like the post and you on there doing your little, okay, it's a beautiful day in Canada, and you like the post, 
you just inserted yourself in some shit. Now, look how this all play out. I'll keep it 1,000. Look how it all play out. Oh, so half the country thinking that you, uh, Rostin played the record, the Kendrick Lamar record, and he got jumped on because he played the Kendrick Lamar record. So now you got a whole West Coast of people. They at your head. Oh, oh that's what we doing? You don't need that, Mr. Drake. You don't need to be confined. You're too talented. I like you. I got friends that like you. I don't know you personally. Don't need to know you personally. But you're too talented to insert yourself in some shit that you're not really you're not really about. To have a whole whole coast at your head. You don't want that. I don't want that for you. Leave this shit alone, boss. Because it's not gonna be the rapper pull the trigger. It's not gonna be the rapper pull the trigger. It's not gonna be the rapper that robs somebody. It's not gonna be the rapper that that do some some. No, it's gonna be somebody looking for a come up. It's gonna be somebody looking for a come up. Or it's gonna be some super fan who gonna then do the do the shooting. You don't be knowing where it's coming from. So I would have expected Mr. Drake to, to, to be like, yo, I don't condone violence. That ain't what it is. I don't, you know, I don't have nothing to do with that or none of that. You, you feel me? Because y'all can play the little games where you're talking on this on this, this social media shit and you're doing your little texting and you're tweeting and you're talking and all the however y'all say whatever y'all want to say about each other. You can do that on here. But when you go to put hands on people, when you go to put hands on people, that's when the shit go to a whole nother level. When you go putting hands on people that go to a whole nother level. So people didn't have to put hands on, on you. And then they can have a conversation about it. And this is not a game. Because you put your hands on, on your homeboys put their hands on. They did not put their hands on Ross. They put their hands on Sam and them other people who are with Ross. The rapper never gets hands put on them. It's the other people and then it's the other people that really be by their life. It be the other people who be with the rapper who really on that shit. The rapper just takes these other people who be with them because they're in the streets every day and they take them with them to get them out of the streets to try to save their lives. But then now when you go to put your hands on them dudes, them, them dudes about their life. They ain't with the sucker shit. I'm trying to tell y'all, I'm giving you, I'm putting you up on game now. You ain't never seen no rapper with no bunch of Valor Victorian scholars uh, uh, and all that. What we do is we take our dogs, dudes who we came up with, and we try to show them a better life. We take them around the world. We put them on the plane. We fly them over here. You come on, man. Come on, man. Cause I already know you hard in them streets. Let me show you something different. Let me let me put you on game. Let me let me get you in this business some kind of way so you can change your life. But then now when you put that street shit on one of these streets, dude, in this rap game, bro. The kid who was laying down, the kid who was laying down on the ground. I'm going to leave that like that. So it, it ain't the rapper. It's not the rapper. The rapper never gets touched. The rapper never gets touched. He gets bagged up. He may get a little push or shove, but then it's the guys around. And then what ends up happening is you condone it. No, you don't want to do that. You got to be smarter than that. You got to be like, hey, look here, man. I don't condone no violence. Let me get on the phone. Hey, man, look here, man. Look, man, I ain't with them people. Now, if you with them people, if you with them people now, if you with them people, then you go tweet, yeah, good job. And then you got you to gotta deal with the consequences that come behind that. It ain't going to be the rapper that touch you. It's going to be the people who are around you. And then when you invoke 305 in that, 
that you don't want to do. Just one thing about it. We got a whole bunch of people down here that, that I said a long time ago. We got a whole bunch of people down here that I said a long time ago. Y'all need to check these people at the door. But then, obviously, we had a lot of groupy-ass people around here start bringing these dudes around here and allowing them to just come run up and down here. But but they run around on South Beach. Let me just let y'all know that right now. That's South Beach. The door could close for all you motherfuckers real quick. The door could close for everybody. Don't invoke 305 in your jokes about that situation because... You you invoke a whole a whole situation. Keep three hundred five out your mouth. I'm just I'm just telling you right now because it, 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 this shit is it, everybody everybody has some has a part of their city where people really bleed this shit. Everybody has a part of their city. I don't care whether you're from Raleigh, North Carolina. You could be from Fayetteville. You could be from Brooklyn. You could be from the Bronx. You could be from. Inglewood, you could everybody, everybody, you got people on, on, everywhere that bleed this shit. They ain't really with the Hollywoodness. I'm telling you right now, it's a lot of people who ain't buy, ain't and don't play like that. So when you're doing your little games with the with your rappers and you're running off at the mile and you're joking them and all that, don't joke, don't joke my city. I'm telling you that right now. Just don't joke the city, boss. Don't joke the city. We ain't no jokes. That shit you see, we are not South Beach. What you see over there on South Beach, that's them over there. People down here bleed this shit. Don't joke. Don't joke the city. So I'm just going to leave that like that. But for the most part, people, as an elder statesman that has seen two of my good friends Biggie and Park died senselessly, and it wasn't by them pulling the trigger on them, each other. It was the people that surround them. I would hope that you two gentlemen get your shit together, Mr. Drake and Mr. Mr. Ross, because I don't want this to end like that. It shouldn't end like that. I'm gonna be the elder statesman of it all. You don't want that. I leave it like that. Y'all can cut this motherfucker up however y'all want to cut it up. But I said it and I stand firm on it. Y'all have a nice night. Y'all see where it's going? And I'm talking about the brother ain't lying though because like this type of stuff, it always small. It always starts small. You see what I'm saying? Small shit always turn into big shit. You see, if it goes unchecked, that's why it got to be checked right now. Because if it's not checked, it can get deeper than that. Drake, you setting these brothers up. You getting these brothers come out there and you getting people that like to jump on them and stuff like that. And then you agreeing with it. I'm talking about like, at, at, like the brother said, like Luke said, you could, you, you were supposed to come out and say, you know what, look, I condemn any violence. What me and this man got going on, that's just what we got going on. I look, I, I, I condemn that. They shouldn't have did that. They was out of pocket for that. You know what I mean? Let me apologize for my city. I mean, come on, y'all. We got to be more respectful. We got to act a little bit better than that. We can't be doing that. That right there probably would have stopped y'all beef. Rick Ross probably would have had to say, you know what? Hey, look, check this out, man. Hey, I'm tripping, man. I'm going to leave that alone, this, that, and the other. But since you agreeing with what had happened to him, you putting fire on fire. And who's to know how far this thing might go now if you get caught in Miami or if you get caught somewhere in America where Rick Ross can call some people and say, hey, check this out. Are y'all over there? Hey, man, look, let me send 100000 through there, man. Y'all run through there and do this and do that, do this, do that. Do what y'all want to do because it's not that hard. Uh, me in my mind, I'm talking about, man, if both of you brothers is millionaires. I mean, y'all should have some people in y'all camps that are way more intelligent than both of you and tell both of you, hey, look, this is enough. 
leave that alone. Continue to make y'all millions. Continue to take care of y'all families and continue to live y'all life, you know, prosperous as y'all need to. Make more money and take care of your loved ones and things like that. Because if you got people around y'all, if both of you brothers got people around y'all encouraging this stuff that's going on, then both of y'all will end up losing. This is hood educated, not lame related. Peace and love and y'all take care of yourself out there. If I said anything that caused you to think, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And if you're feeling generous, please make a small donation to the channel. Now before I depart, allow me to give a shout out to some of the blessings that I received this week. <clears throat> allow me to give a shout out to uh, Network Dude for the $4.99 super thanks. Thank you. Uh, a Lotus for the nine dollars and ninety nine cents super thanks. Thank you. J Crazy for the two dollars super thanks. Thank you. Uh, Brother Mister Carter for the five dollar cash shaft. Thank you. Uh, Robert Conway for the five dollar cash shaft. Thank you. Kenny Boo from the No for the five dollar cash shaft. Thank you. Uh, DJ Martin for the three dollar cash shaft. Thank you. And the homeboy Chad Lacey for the ten dollar cash shop. Thank you. And last but not least, Antoine Webb for the thirty dollar cash shop. This is hood educated, not lame related. Peace and love, and y'all take care of yourself out there.